Welcome to MegaGen's educational video series. In this video tutorial, we're going to be teaching you how to use Samuel Lee's internal sinus graft system for a crustal approach to sinus augmentation. Samuel Lee's internal sinus graft system is the original crustal sinus lift kit. The instrumentation provided in this valuable kit will allow you to get consistent and predictable results using a crustal approach to sinus augmentation. The ability to actually see the sinus membrane means that with our kit, grafting from the crust is no longer a blind technique. The benefits of using Samuel Lee's internal sinus graft system are faster procedures, less pain, and faster healing time for the patient. Now, for part one, we will begin with an overview of the kit and later in part two we will go through the drilling protocol and use of the tools. To open the kit, press the white button on the front and gently lift the lid. For your convenience, there's a stand on the bottom that allows you to prop up the kit. On the top left, you will find three pointed trephines. The diameter of the outer rim of the first trephine is four millimeters. The second is five and the third is six millimeters. The diameter of the implant that will be placed into the ridge determines which trephine will be used in each case. The pointed trephine is designed to guide the adjustable drill to the exact location before drilling. The black line around the pointed trephine marks a depth of two millimeters. Next to the pointed trephines, you will find the adjustable stopper and bone ejecting, or ASBE, trephines. The ASBE trephine is used to create and remove a core of bone under the sinus cavity to prepare for sinus augmentation and implant placement. The outer diameters of the ASBE trephines match those of the pointed trephines. This trephine is adjusted by using the hand driver to loosen the small screw found on the band of the trephine. Be careful not to loosen the screw all the way. Adjust the trephine by twisting the shank to the left for a deeper depth and right for a shorter depth. When the appropriate depth is reached, use the hand driver to tighten the side screw. Make sure that when you tighten the side screw, it engages the flat side of the internal shank screw. If the flat side is not engaged, the adjustable trephine is not tightened correctly. The black lines around the ASBE trephine and all other trephines, drills, and instruments mark depths of two, four, five, six, eight, and ten millimeters. For your convenience, there is a drill reference on the kit in the lower left hand corner. To the right of the ASBE trephines are the diamond drills. The diamond drills will allow you to easily penetrate the maxilla by grinding away the last one to two millimeters of bone under the sinus cavity. The drill has such a large contact area with the membrane that there is no damage to the membrane at all. Around the outer rim of the diamond drill there is a carved ledge that acts as a depth stopper and prevents the drill from entering the sinus cavity. The outer diameters of the diamond drills match those of the pointed and ASBE trephines. At the top right of the kit are the reamer drills. These drills are designed to cut away the last half millimeter area of cortical bone that functions as the stopper for the diamond drill. Using the reamer is optional. If you do decide to use it, make sure that the membrane has been elevated with the mushroom instrument. The outer diameter of the reamer drills are 3.8, 4.8, and 5.8 millimeters. The first instruments below the trephines and drills are the mushroom elevators. The mushroom instrument allows you to elevate the membrane according to fixture length and desirable location after penetrating the maxilla. The tips of the mushrooms are 2.8, 3.8, 4.8, and 5.8 millimeters in diameter. The cobra instrument is designed to widen the lift of the membrane after it has been elevated. When using the instrument, one side is used to elevate the right part and the other side is for the left part of the membrane. After the membrane elevation, spreader and condenser are used for spreading bone grafting material in the secured space and condensing the grafted bone. The spreader is used for both sides and the condenser is used for the upper area.
for the crustal approach to sinus augmentation using Samuel Lee's internal sinus lift system, you need at least 9 millimeters of crustal width and 5 millimeters or less of bone under the membrane. It is always recommended to use a CT scan for proper diagnostics and treatment planning prior to sinus augmentation. The first step is to determine which of the three pointed trephines you will use depending on what diameter implant you plan to place. The first trephine can be used for placement of a 5 mm implant, the second trephine can be used for placement of a 6 mm implant, and the third trephine can be used for placement of a 7 mm implant. After choosing your size, lay a flap towards the palate. Try to find a flat area on the crest of the ridge, then make your entry point with the pointed trephine going at a speed of 1000 RPMs, stopping at the 2 mm depth mark. Next. Take the same diameter adjustable trephine and set it to a depth of 1 mm shy of the sinus membrane. For the purpose of this tutorial, let's assume that you have 5 mm of bone under the sinus, so set the trephine to 4 mm. Place the trephine directly into the score made from the pointed trephine and drill at 1000 RPMs. Run it to the 4 mm line. After drilling to 4 mm depth, the adjustable stop will press against the crest of the bone at 4 mm. While drilling at 1000 RPMs, tilt the trephine mesially and distally and try to release the core of bone from the maxilla. Loosen the side screw and turn the adjustable screw to the left to push out the core of bone so that you can particulate the core and use it later in your sinus augmentation. Now, at 1 mm of bone under the membrane, you'll use the same diameter diamond burr at 700 RPMs to grind away the last millimeter of bone. When using the diamond burr, drill for 4 or 5 seconds and then pull back for a second, checking to see how close you are to grinding through. Once the bone has been grinded away, the burr will start to drop in and be stopped by the ledge carved around the head of the diamond burr. This ledge will prevent dropping into the sinus cavity. At this point, you will actually be able to see the membrane. If the bone has not been completely removed, go back in with the diamond burr until it is. The next step is to use the mushroom elevators to release the membrane. Start with the smallest size. In a gentle circular motion, start elevating the membrane off of the floor of the sinus. Once you've loosened the membrane by using a combination of mushroom elevators, it is now recommended to start packing bone up into the sinus and use the bone to protect the membrane while elevating it. You can use as much bone as you need and on an x-ray you will see that the membrane has been elevated. Pack more bone and use the spreader to move bone medially and distally. At this point you can use the cobra tool to scrape the floor of the sinus and separate the membrane from the bone medially and distally. This promotes bleeding into the sinus, which will bring more bone cells into that area, giving you a much better graft. Now, if the bone is sufficiently condensed, you can place an implant into the site. The size implant will be determined by the diameter of the opening. The smallest diameter implant that can be safely placed is a 4.3 millimeter implant. Recommended length is no more than 11.5 millimeters for a regular diameter implant and if you're using our Rescue Y diameter implant, a 7.5 or 8 millimeters would be the maximum length recommended. After surgery, the tools should be sterilized and the entire kit can be placed into the autoclave directly without the need for a sterilization bag. This concludes the video tutorial. If you have any further questions, please contact the Megagen sales representative in your area. If you aren't sure who your sales rep is, please give Megagen customer support a call at 1-866-277-5662.